Hey everybody, it's the Ionic Guy here. Today I want to talk to you guys about the first 10 things I think everybody who purchases an Ionic 5 should do. Some of these things are pretty similar to what most people would do with any car, but a few of them are particular to this model. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you first get your Ionic 5, if you have multiple drivers of the vehicle, is set up your personal profiles. So when you get to the main home screen of the car, what you're gonna do is click on this little logo up here. And right here, you can see I already have one set up for myself. Click change user. And over here on the left-hand side, you'll see you can have a couple drivers and a guest. So I'm gonna pick driver two since my profile is already set up. It's gonna say switching user profile. Then you're gonna click start. You can pick your language, how you would like your keyboard laid out. You can rename it. How you like your map settings. If you like the 3D map better, you can have that. What's great about this car is the level of customizability and with Having your own profile, you can have all your presets set for you when you get in the car. Your Bluetooth will be tied to your profile. Your layout of your home screen. Everything. The lighting, the color of the lighting, what temperature you keep, the climate control set at. All that is tied to your user profile. So if you share the car with another person, this is going to make your life really easy. Another thing you should do when you get your Ionic 5 is replace the incandescent light bulbs with LEDs. It makes a huge difference in terms of brightness. To replace this trunk light with an LED bulb, you're going to just push on the top corner of it, pull it out, and you can simply pop it off. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is take the, the plastic lens off. And this bulb, you can simply just pull right on out. Now we're gonna go back to the car. Then to reinstall, you're gonna to wanna to put the housing back on the connector first because you have to have the polarity of the bulb correct or else it won't light up. So in that orientation, you can see the polarity is reversed. So we'll rotate the bulb 180 degrees and just pop that in. Then all we have to do is reattach the lens and simply put it back into place and that's going to be a lot brighter than the incandescent bulb. Now other than the two vanity lights and a light in the glove box, the rest of the lights in the interior are all LED. These two lights and the dome light in the back are LED already, so those don't need replacing. So to replace these, all we're gonna do is take a pry tool, preferably plastic, just get around the side of that, pull it straight out. So once this is hanging out, all you have to do is squeeze this electrical connector right here, and you can just pop that completely off. Once we have this out, you just have to stick a screwdriver in the top here, push down on that and it should pop off. Then from in here, you can just push the bulb out. Pretty simple. Just like with the trunk, we need to plug this back in so we can check our polarity. So we'll plug that in. With the button engaged, as if it's on, we can take the LED, touch the contacts, see that that's not working. So we'll rotate 180 degrees. There we go. We'll just push that up and in. Rotate that. Then we can take our lens, pop that back on, and then just simply push this back up into place, and you're done. So a neat feature with this is that if you have the light on and you're done and you shut this, it turns the light off. Now you'll just repeat the same process on the passenger side. A uh, link is in the description for the three bulbs you'll need for the car. 
The next thing you're going to want in your Ionic 5 is a dash cam. So I can speak from experience. This dash cam has paid for itself with one accident. Granted, it's not the most expensive dash cam, but I was able to provide proof that I wasn't at fault in an accident where I was hit. And it's just all around a great thing to have. Just a little bit of peace of mind with crazy drivers and people not paying attention when they're driving anymore. So I have a video, which I will have a link to up in the corner right now, where I show you how you can install a Dongar USB port up here so that you don't have to run the uh, USB cable all the way across and down the pillars and down here to the, the USB port down below. So one of the next things you're gonna to wanna to do with your car is set your charge limits. Now, unless you need 100% of your battery every day, you're not gonna to wanna to keep it at that. This car's battery chemistry is lithium ion based and it likes to be between 50, 60 and 80%. That's its ideal charged area. Now, if this car had a lithium iron phosphate chemistry, as per with Tesla vehicles, the, the base models, that battery chemistry does like to be charged to 100% and it doesn't degrade it in any way, shape or form. But with our cars, we prefer to keep them at 80 or below. So in this screen under EV settings, you can go ahead and change that. So the lowest you can go is 50%, but I like to keep mine at 80%. And it'll even give you a little estimated time to that level. Right now I'm at 65%. So on a level two charger, it would take about an hour and five minutes to get to 80%. So another thing you're going to want to do after taking delivery is check your tire pressure. In my experience, dealers like to really overpressure the tires, which isn't ideal. According to the plate in our car, cold tire pressure should be about 36 PSI. One of the first things I always like to do when I get a new car is get the front windows tinted to match the rears. I think it's a better look. It gives you more privacy in the car. And if you get a certain type of, of window tint, it really blocks a lot of UV light. You don't get that burning sensation on your skin when you're driving with the untinted windows on a hot day it really makes driving a lot more enjoyable in my opinion. And you can see here, the tint shop I used was able to get the front windows tinted close to the level of the back. They're just a little bit more clear than the, the rear privacy glass. But for about $100, you can get both front windows tinted, at least in my area, and I think it's well worth the cost. Another thing you should do when you get your car, if you didn't ask the dealer to check for software updates, is you are going to check for that yourself. And you can do that by going into Setup, General, and right here you can see what software version you are on. So from this screen, you can see I updated the software on January 25th. So as of the making of this video in April 2022, over-the-air software updates are not yet available. They are available in some other countries, but here in the United States, they are not. That update should be coming at some point this year, so depending on when you're watching this video, you might already have the OTA update. So to find the latest version of the software, log into your owner's portal on HyundaiUSA.com and scroll way down to the bottom here until you see update your vehicle with the latest map update. Click learn more. Then here, you'll scroll to the left, click on notifications. And here's where the latest version will be. So what I'm gonna do is click on that latest version, which is November, 2021. Scroll down a little bit, and then you can either download the updater software or you can list all eligible vehicles. So I click on all eligible vehicles. And here you can scroll through the list and there's Ionic 5. And right there is the software version, and that matches what's in the car. So if you're a first time EV owner, 
and you need to be able to charge a little bit faster than level one, what you're gonna to wanna to do is get yourself a level two charger. Now here I have the ChargePoint CPH50, which is up to 50 amps. My electrical supplier gives us a $500 discount to purchase a level two charger, and $500 off this brings it to about $150, depending on where and when you purchase it. So this is definitely a highly rated charger based on Tom Malagany's videos. It has a really good flexible cord for cold weather climates like where I live. And yeah, it's been a great charger. We really like it. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you first get your Ionic 5 is replace the windshield wipers. I cannot express just how horrible the factory windshield wipers are. And if you've experienced the car's original windshield wipers, then you know what I'm talking about. So I replaced mine with some Bosch icons and they've been great, especially in the winter time. So something you'll notice with the wipers on the Ionic 5, or if you're used to just being able to pull your wiper blades up to replace them or to put them in the upright position if there's gonna be snow, this just hits the hood and you can't move it. So there's a trick to doing this. Shut it off, hold the wipers up, and they will go into their service position. Once in the service position, you can flip them down and you can easily replace them. There's nothing particularly special about attaching a new blade. They're just traditional J-hook style. Once you're done replacing your blades, you can power the car back on, give it a flick up, and they'll return to their normal stored position. So a bit of a shameless plug, but you're gonna wanna get some sunglass holders for your Ionic 5 since we don't have anything in the overhead area. So these are available on my Etsy store for $20 plus shipping and handling, which is about $3. And these are just magnetically held in place. You can easily pull your glasses off. And they don't slide around when you're driving. So check out my Etsy store. The link is in the description below. So any glaring emissions? Let me know down in the comments what you guys like to do after you get a new car specifically the Ionic 5 if you've already gotten it. So as always, thank you for watching. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Take care, everybody.